So this is a classic picture that the Trusted Computing Group's been using for years. This is all the areas that they actually write specifications on today. By the way, a few of these would touch the Bitcoin community. Whoops, it has an automation in it. Um, so one of those is um, the simple process of trusted computing within the device. Another is printers and copiers. Turns out that there's this whole problem in printing secure identities, and there's been a working group working on secure printing capabilities, which obviously if you had those kind of capabilities in every generic HP printer would be kind of fun if you were printing, for example, private keys, and you wanted to know that they were tamper-resistant, hadn't been altered, couldn't be copied, and that there was proof that they came off the right printer. That'd be interesting. Oh, that's the national identity program for anybody who wants to print a national identity card. It's an identical problem. There's a bunch of crazy people in the identity space worrying about secure printers who've been writing stuff down in this area for years. Um, network security, mobile phones, it's a fairly broad, very active group. And for good or for bad in this community, it's been supervised by almost all of the major governments. So they're not members, they can't vote, they don't have a vote on any of the specifications, but if you go to the standards meetings, you will get to hang out with the CESG guys, the NSA guys, the Germans, the Chinese, the Japanese, they've all been coming to quite a few of the meetings for a long time. Why? Because they're really interested in the context of tamper-resistant hardware security in all the devices. So it's been a... It's been an interesting standards body. It's been very effective. It's shipped a ton of technology, and it continues to move forward and deliver new capabilities. TPM 2.0, which is the replacement of 1.2, has just begun shipping in the last year. It's required on everything with a Microsoft logo as of January 1st, 2015. So it will outship in volume the equivalent of all of iPhone's volume shipments, just to put it in scope we'll have two, TPM 2.0 on the box. And the question is, well, so do we use it? By the way, TPM 2.0 is crypto agile. In theory, if you had a Bitcoin working group within TCG, you could, in theory, put the Bitcoin protocol inside the trusted computing device um, if you get the manufacturers to agree to it. I'm not sure that's the right path. It would take two to three years to get the chip guys to do that. You'll have a broader trusted execution environment before you'll get it um, in the chip. So what's a TPM? A TPM chip is a trusted platform module. It's a chip on your motherboard. It is secured and soldered to your motherboard. There are now actually virtual TPMs where they actually run the protocol of the chip but in a trusted execution environment. So for example, if you have, um, it's not this one, this is the Surface Pro, but if you have a Surface RT, it's an ARM-based processor. It has a TPM in it, but it's a TPM that runs in ARM Trust Zone. The ARM processor has a secure area in it, and it actually presents the capabilities of the Trusted Platform Module chip. Um, there's a billion of them. Uh, it's on all your Windows Mobile devices. So anybody who has a Windows Mobile phone has a TPM in it. Um, it's across all the Microsoft infrastructure. Actually, there are TPM primitives in Xbox as well, which is a little bit interesting. Um, and so what's it do? It does a very simple thing. It has the ability to generate a key pair in the silicon publish the public key, which you can check the signatures on to know it came from the right chips, and hold the private key in a manner that it cannot be copied. It has lots of other capabilities and features as well, but fundamentally in this environment, that one thing is incredibly valuable.